Greetings, Body of Messiah. Mark Pulley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching from Yahweh's laws and commandments on this first day of the week. As we are winding down the Feast of Unleavened Bread, I pray that your feast has been a blessing. I pray that you have learned and grown abundantly in whatever Yahweh and Yeshua wanted you to teach you for you to experience this year in unleavened bread and it is my personal belief in that during the next year whatever Yah started in this feast he will continue to purge you and me of all uh, false teachings and doctrines of men that have gotten into our belief system but I also believe that he's going to do it in such a way that it will be productive in yours in my life so thanks for tuning in thank you for all your words of encouragement your support your prayers your intercession we just are greatly appreciate it and you are helping us to reach others and to minister to others whether it's in the spiritual form or the natural form so today let's turn to Romans 16 I don't have a long in-depth teaching but how Yahweh uses me is he speaks a word to me and when I receive that word first of all I take that word and apply it to my life then I research the scriptures with that word and see where I need to grow in that word and sometimes I may not see it at the moment but I receive it by faith because Yahweh sent it and remember Psalm 107 20 he sent his word his instructions to heal us and to deliver us from all our destructions and many times he will send a word in the spirit of meekness to help you and I recover ourselves out of some area of our life that we have been trapped in or functioning in that we may not have seen it. And so there are those in the body of Torah who in their flesh nature create strife and division they may not realize it I know I used to be one of these that you know I remember a sister years ago and I took that word to heart and it continues to minister to me and she said it's not what you say but it's how you say it and if you say things through the works of the flesh and you say things without having the development of the fruit of the Spirit within you then you're gonna come across in a fleshly manner and you're not going to help those that it may be in your heart to help or to give them understanding so sometimes people minister things and they personally don't see anything wrong with it but what they share what they teach creates division and strife it creates argumentativeness it creates haughtiness pride all right they lack the nature 
of Yahweh's Spirit to be humble, meek, gentle, loving, kind, gracious, building up, and teaching patiently. These people, whether you want to admit it or not, when you're like this, you are a babe in spiritual growth. Now, you may understand a lot of things in the Scripture, but as far as ministering that Scripture, you are a babe, and as Paul said, you are carnal, because much of what is said comes out and creates strife instead of building up the body. And so, we need to see and understand these things. The fruit of the Spirit is not something that can be taught. It has to be grown. It has to be grown by Yahweh's Spirit. But if you're an individual that cannot receive correction, or if your nature and your personality is you always have to be correct, you always come across as condemning to others and harsh and mean-spirited. And granted, you know, when we watch many teachings on YouTube, that's the way so many come across. Now, there, there are a handful of people that come across gentle and meek and loving and gracious. And, you know, if you choose to, to pronounce Yah's name and Yeshua's name a little different than they do, they don't condemn you for it. They, they're not harsh against you saying things like, well, the accurate biblical Hebraic way of Yah's name or Yeshua's name or the accurate biblical time to keep the feasts are on this day and that day. No, they don't come across that way. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's harsh. That's mean-spirited. That's coming through the works of the flesh instead of the spirit. And you're not going to help people that way. You're not going to build them up. You're not going to reach them. You're condemning them. And see, Paul said in Romans 16, 17, Now I call upon you, brothers, watch out for those who cause divisions. Another version says divisions and strife. This version says divisions and stumbling. You cause people to stumble instead of helping them grow in the grace of Yahshua and in the grace of Yahweh. Now, another version says to mark those who cause division and avoid them. And the reason you need to avoid these until they grow and are producing the fruit of the Spirit is because it's like a cancer. It will spread and it will do more destruction in your life and through you than it will in helping you. Now, the Apostle Peter said that we are to grow in grace and in knowledge of Yahweh's laws and commandments. That means that we all are not going to get it the first time it comes to us or presented to us. And much of how it's presented will determine how much it will be received. Now, I've always joked around with my wife about this uh, in because when she makes a meal and we have company, she likes to present it what I call girly. You know, she has the table 
all set up real nice and pretty. You know, if it's a buffet type thing, she has all that organized or nice or like when we've gone out to a fancy restaurant, it's, it's as much in the presentation of the food as well as how the food tastes. And I always, you know, joke around about it, mess around with her about it. And she said, no, this is very important. And those that are chefs, they take this serious. It's in how they present the food you ordered as much as how well it's cooked, flavored, and tasted. In the same way spiritually. It's just not about delivering the word. It's about how we present it. Are we gracious? Are we loving? Are we kind? You know, the Apostle Paul said in Galatians 6, 1, uh, brothers, when another brother is taken into fault, you which are spiritual need to restore one in the spirit of meekness. And see, there is a lot of lack in that. And the reason for it is many times people have more of a religious spirit and a haughty spirit than they do of Yah's or Yahshua's humble, meek, gracious, kind, loving spirit. And all those things takes time to grow. Even when you share a word with someone that is, you know, they definitely need to hear that word. You need to do it in a matter of patience and in a matter of meekness and humility and love because they're probably not going to get it right away off the bat. And when you share it, you also need to learn how to share things, when to share them, and how much to share them, and to speak, when to speak, and when not to speak. There have been times people that we have pastored have said, why didn't you share that with us before? And my only answer is, you weren't ready to receive it. And I just... Think about what Yeshua said to his disciples that there were many things in the Gospel of John that he wanted to share with them, but they were not able yet to receive it. So we need to learn when to share it, how much to share it, and we need to make sure that we are doing it through the fruit of the Spirit. Now everybody will defend themselves and say, oh yeah. I'm, I'm doing it in love and I'm doing it meekly, but we need to really have the light of the Ruach and we need to really examine ourselves whether that is the case or whether we're being harsh or being mean-spirited. And many times it takes other people to look at and to listen to what you share and that they would be gracious in sharing with you whether or not you are harsh or being loving. And again, all of us, this takes growth. This takes time. We need to be patient with ourselves. And we need to be patient with others. But the Apostle Paul said here in Romans that we are to mark those that cause divisions and stumbling. They cause strife. They're always, they're always, you know, coming across that the way they see things is 100% biblical and accurate and according to the Torah. And everybody else that does anything differently is inaccurate and is missing it. And when you come across that way and you say things like that, you're not ministering under the grace of Yah's fruitful spirit. 
and that's harsh and that you know this this message is not easy to share it's it's twice as hard to take it and then examine yourself concerning it to make sure that you are not just as guilty and I have found out when you point the finger and you know religious spirits and religious uh, Pharisees they're great at pointing the finger but you need to realize when you point the finger you got three fingers point or actually three fingers and a thumb pointing back at you so when you minister through judgment the only person that can do that is Yeshua himself because he's the only perfect one. The rest of us are extremely flawed. The rest of us, as Brother Bear said the other day on the teaching, we suck in some, in some ways of keeping the scriptures and being fruitful concerning the fruit of the Spirit. All right, now, we, I wrote here, they come across as condemning and harsh. So if you're coming across with condemnation, that if someone doesn't see things exactly the way you see them, you promote yourself as being accurate and they as missing it, that's condemnation. That's condemnation, and we are not to minister through the spirit of condemnation. That's the works of the flesh. That's through a haughty spirit. Most of the time, people like this don't see or understand that they're even doing this. Their nature, their flesh nature, the way they've been the majority of their life, has been argumentative, has been division, has been strife, has been harsh and condemning. But they think it's ministering through the Spirit, and it's not. It turns people off. And if you are one that argues and debates and fights about scriptural things, you need to quit it because the servant of Yahweh, Paul said, must not um, argue or debate or get in strife. But he says, you must be gentle and teachable as you are teaching others. You must, ju just like a child, the first time you teach them about the alphabet say or about writing they don't they don't get it they may not know what you're saying or they may be sloppy in it but you need to be loving and you need to be gracious the best teachers in school and in the the ministry are those that are like that because they're being like the messiah they're being fruitful they're being gracious people like this are very religious and have a proud religious spirit and are difficult to be around and to talk to and in my opinion that's what Paul is sharing here we need to mark them we need to be away from them I know for myself when I've discerned that people are like this. You know, I, I keep them at a arm's distance until I see the fruit of the Spirit coming through their ministry. And if they don't develop and grow in the fruit of the Spirit, I eventually just don't want a whole lot to do with them because they're going to do more damage than good. But I try to give them a, a lot of time because there are things they may have to say that I need to hear 
but you can't hear it if they're just condemning you. All right. Now here's something to think about. There's Yahweh's way of ministering, and then there's the flesh's way. And we need to make sure that we are functioning and ministering through Yahweh's way and not through the way of the flesh. And it takes time to learn. It takes time to change. It takes time to grow, to increase in the things of Yah and in the things that Yeshua teaches. We're, we all are not going to get it overnight and we need to be gracious with ourselves. But more importantly, if you're called to minister and if you're not called to the fivefold ministry you need to be really hesitant on what you try to teach because it's the fivefold ministry the apostle prophet the pastor evangelist and teacher that Yeshua has anointed to build up his flock and many people do not um, are not called in that in those categories and that doesn't mean they can't share that doesn't mean they can't teach but it does mean that they need to really be concerned with what they're saying and how they're saying it you know all the apostles were apostles all those that we read in the scriptures that taught things in the scriptures, they were either apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, or teachers. Some were deacons, some were elders. And if a person isn't anointed in these areas and called by Yahweh and the Messiah, you just need to be really careful on what you say and how you say it. All right. We need to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Savior. We don't need to be condemning. We don't need to condemn others because they, miss, they might not understand about Yah's calendars the way you do or about Yah's name the way you do or about Yah's or Yahshua's name the way you do they may not, they may understand to pronounce it a little differently and we cannot be condemning because you're not going to join the body in unity if you are condemning and we have people in our fellowship that believe and speak the name Yahuwah where we speak Yahuwah or Yahweh but we don't get in strife over it we don't get in condemnation over it we don't tell them that they are inaccurate and they don't tell us that you are inaccurate there are different forms of Hebrew. And so we need to be gracious. We need to be gentle and kind with each other so that we can fellowship with one another. When a person comes across haughty and that their way is the only way and the way they see it is the biblical accurate way as soon as they write those words I turn them off I stop listening because they're speaking not through Yah's spirit but through their carnal flesh and you know we've all maybe have done things like that 
and you know and most of us repent of it you know it was great when you know this year you saw people um, celebrating Passover and unleavened bread at different times and there were people that were harsh and mean-spirited and condemned people but then there are a lot of people that you know if you choose to celebrate it uh, during this according to this calendar or that calendar they were in unity with you they were encouraging you they were supporting you they were standing with you even though they celebrated it and believed it to be at a different time that's the ruach that's spiritual maturity and we all need to grow in that and one of the other things that we need to learn we need to learn when to speak and how to speak it we need to learn when to keep silent because sometimes you know the way we say it is not the way Yah wants us to say it and it may be the delivering part on our part that we are not there yet and we need to grow and be developed further and sometimes it's the individual is not ready to receive it yet and so we need to learn when to speak when not to speak when to speak when to be silent we also need to learn when to speak only thus saith Yahweh when Yahweh says for you to speak leads you to speak quickens you to speak there are many things that I mull over and you know don't say nothing about then all of a sudden I just know it's time to speak and so we need to learn how to grow in grace and in knowledge and we also need to learn timing when it's time to speak thus saith Yahweh and if it's not a thus saith Yahweh you need to just be silent until it's time by Yahweh to speak and those that you are discerning that are mostly critical and harsh and of a religious spirit and are condemning you for your faith and what you believe you need to mark them you need to be aware of them and the Apostle Paul said you need to avoid them you need to avoid them you need to give people time to grow you might need to, you know, hold them off at a arm's length, so to speak, until they can grow. And if, you know, you give them a, a, a long season of time, and, and even though you care about them, but they just keep condemning, they just keep being proudful, they just keep being harsh, and they, they call it being spiritual, well then you might need to cut that relationship and you just you know you hate to do it but you know you just may need to do it so I pray what I shared with you um, helps you helps you grow helps you to become more gracious helps you to become more loving and kind and if for some reason you have been ministered to condemningly I pray that you would be restored and healed from that condemnation I also pray that if you are of an individual that is constantly trying to correct the body of Messiah you are constantly trying to point out faults you are constantly a fault finder you are constantly 
always correct and everybody else is inaccurate, I pray that you would examine yourself in the light of the scriptures. And I pray that you would see that that is not the way to be. That is not ministering through the fruit of the Spirit. And I pray that you would renounce it and repent of it and ask Yahweh to help you. To help you not be that way. I remember back in the 80s when I first came to the ministry, that grieved me because I came across that way. And I asked Yahweh to help me. And what he did is he put me on the shelf for a number of years and then slowly began to have me minister. It was a number of years and you might need to be put on the shelf and you might need to stop ministering in order for him to grow and develop you in the fruit of the Spirit. And I'm not condemning you. I'm just trying to share with you, you are doing more harm than good. And you might need to take the time to build yourself up in the fruit of the Spirit and for Yah's Spirit to develop you and to cause you to grow and you know this doesn't take place in weeks sometimes it's months sometimes and most of the times it may be years so i pray this helps you i pray this uh blesses you gives you something to think about chew on and for all of us To be aware, it's not what we say, it's how we say it. And if how you say it is coming harshly and fleshly, then you may need to pull aside for a while and just grow and rest and allow Yah's Spirit to do a work, a deep work within you. So Father, we praise you. Father, we bless you on this the first day of the week and we thank you father for your grace your kindness and your mercy we all are not there where we need to be yet and we all need to grow and increase in your grace in your torah in your instructions and in the anointing which you have placed within our lives. Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. Father, we praise you. Until next time, Yahweh bless you. Yahweh make his face shine on you. Yahweh give you peace. May his presence abound within you. And may we all grow and increase in the fruit of Yah's spirit. If you want to connect with us, we have a website, YahwehYeshuaAssembly.com. Also, we're on the, the social uh, website or media, um, Facebook, Twitter, or X, MeWe, Torah Network, or you can connect with me, Mark Pulley, on Facebook as well. So until next, next time, Yahweh abundantly bless you.